Hello and welcome everybody. King Dems back at it again. You know. Today we're taking a look at Dignitas versus Fiend. We're going to take a look at Dig's humongous comeback on the CT side of Nuke. Uh, Dig are a good Nuke team. Fantastic CC still a, the, the CT sided Nuke team. Um, T sides can be a little shaky as it was in this game. Um, seen better T sides from them recently against Heroic. Uh, but anyway, we'll get into this one straight away. I'm going to take a look at what Fiend do that isn't so great and what Dignitas do that is great. Now, we're going to start off with the pistol strat. Now, what you're going to see play out here uh, is starting to play out. Uh, they're going to throw a few grenades into the upper site. Um, I think Fiend are trying to make it seem like potentially an upper rush is coming. They throw, a, I believe, a molly onto her. Yep, molly onto her and a flashbang through. And there's a, a, a schmirk landing for door. This is actually for Victor to have a little lurky poos. Like, this is not going to be an upper hit. What's going to happen here is now Fiend are going to go barreling down towards the lower site through ramp. While Victor is going to have a little lurk through door here. Now... There's a few reasons that I'm not a huge fan of this pistol strat from Fiend. In isolation, it's not necessarily the worst strat in the world. They try and fake an upper hit, hopefully pull a few rotations, and then, you know, they're going to go barreling onto lower. The thing is, like, there's already three here for Dignitas. I don't know of any CT setup on the pistol where they're going to have... They're going to have at least two upper that are not going to rotate... Particularly once this door smoke's gone down, Freiburg's not just going to jump into the vents like a moron and get killed. Forrest isn't going to move. He's going to be the dedicated site player. I just don't know of any CT setup where this fake upper hit is going to draw any rotations. I don't, I don't really understand what the fake of an upper hit does for Fiend here. It doesn't really do anything as far as I'm concerned. So I think it's kind of wasted utility. I don't mind the smoke to get Victor out. That I understand, but the other utility used, like, you're just not drawing any rotates. And so, as we can see here, they're now going to stack up towards ramp, and they go fairly quickly. This is another aspect of the round I'm not a big fan of. I'm going to preface this and start saying this now, because this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this half. Nuke is a map where you need to make the CTs rotate and move around. You need to make them uncomfortable. You need to take some map control. You need to make the CTs, for example worry about yard you can't let the cts just have yard on lockdown the whole game and throughout this half it's something fiend i think are going to struggle with and not do very well and i think this round is just one example of where their upper fake has drawn no rotations yes okay it's got halls Oak sat in heaven like helping the upper site but if you look at this setup like heap has already seen the ramp players he's falling off Lecro's already getting in position behind the silo here. This two-man setup lower is like so effective at stopping this ramp rush. Victor, as we can see, got lost uh, up here in the upper bomb site. Not his fault. He dies through the smoke to Freiburg, but it just gives Freiburg a really quick rotation. And, and basically, the problem I think with Fiend's strategy is A, this ramp rush is going to struggle anyway because of the setup. B, the upper fake didn't do anything to draw rotations, didn't do anything to help their lower hit. And C, the lurk is so important. Like, the, the whole round essentially hinges on Victor's solo lurk through the door. Freiburg's going to hear him drop probably anyway. If Victor goes so slowly that Freiburg doesn't hear him drop, then this hit is going to be destroyed before they even get here. And, you know, we'll just, ooh, we'll just show you. There we go. And yeah, they just they just tear apart that hit. As I said, in isolation, not the worst round ever from Fiend, but in the context of the rest of the half, it, it just kind of very early on signaled the problems that they're going to be having. Okay, so here we are, our camera angle for checking outside. This is the first gun round. So what we're going to see here is a smoke from Bubble uh, and a molly. Now, the problem with these grenades is this, I think, makes it pretty obvious to Dignitas that this is not going to be much pressure outside. The fact that only one smoke is thrown, that's basically a lurk smoke. Let's throw through very similar smoke, actually. And Bubble is clearly just out here to hold map control. I think Dignitas are probably aware of that. Like, Hallzerk's keeping an eye on these cross smokes. 
actually the fact that Fiend now throw cross smokes means Dingus has to have to think about outside. Uh, so Hulzerk obviously throws a molly to prevent anyone getting into secret too quickly. And Fiend are kind of setting up in a relatively normal default. They've got a molly obviously for upper here. Um, not too much is going to happen at the start of the round. This is obviously for uh, a bubble lurk that these grenades have been thrown. Now, the problem I think here for Fiend is that they, they don't actually take any map control now. So Bubble's obviously having a lurk outside. They've thrown these cross smokes. Nobody's gotten across to red. Nobody's gotten across to secret. Nobody's actually put any pressure on the outside hold. So Lecro can basically say, guys, there's nobody here. Like, maybe they've got people down to lower. Seems unlikely because of the molly's thrown. So I think Dignitas are calling that there's nobody gotten into secret here. So Halzer can just focus on this upper site, which is what he's doing. He can play, like, pretty chill on ramp. He just needs to play for info. And Fiend just hold this really passive default for, like, the entire round. And it doesn't do anything. Like, you're not causing any rotations from the CTs. Like I said, you need to force the CTs to rotate. You can't let the CTs play three upper for free, which is what Dignitas are essentially getting to do this round. They're getting to play three upper with no real pressure put on them to do anything else and to rotate. So still passive default being held. As you can see, Bubble holding very passively outside and just this super passive T setup just isn't going to do anything for Fiend. Um, and just wait you know, we'll see. As you can see, it seems pretty obvious they're grouping up for an upper hit here. Bubble is obviously going to try and wrap Mini. Lecro is watching the only thing that the outside player is going to be looking to do. Look, he's holding this long angle onto Mini. Dignitas basically read this round from the start to the finish, and it's because Fiend was so simplistic and one-dimensional and passive in their default. And as you can see, Bubble gets mowed down by Lecro doesn't actually die this is lucky more than anything from bubble but you know the round is going to fall apart for fiend anyway wait where's Hallzerk gone i've lost him Hallzerk? Hallzerk, where'd you go oh no Hallzerk is in in it oh, okay so forest has been the one to, to okay so dignitas do get this slightly wrong because Forrest obviously comes to have a little look. He doesn't completely abandon Upper, but, you know, he goes to have a little look. It drags him out of position, which gives Fiend maybe a shred of a chance. Um, I like uh, the really dedicated and committed angle that Horzak and Freiburg are playing here. They mow down Victor because he's just simply not ready for that angle. Red Star trades out Horzak, but they don't know for sure Freiburg is here. Freiburg gets the trade. So this looks okay. It looks like you've traded 3v3 into an upper side here. It looks all right. But the problem is, is that Dignitas knew where this was coming from the whole time. Lecro is already getting to upper. Heap is getting here. They're not going to be able to get set up in a post plant before the CTs get there. And kind of, you know, cause some issues. So Han dies, uh, Bubble dies, and, you know, Dream is going to get cleaned up. Now, it looked decent for Fiend for about a second there when they traded into a 3v3 into an upper side hit. The problem is because the hit is so one-dimensional, Dignitas are already converging on this upper hit. They're not going to get set up in a post plant. It's going to be very difficult to get the bomb down. You've got so many angles to worry about on an upper retake, and Fiend have no idea where anyone is because they had so little map control at the start of the round. They've got such little information to work with. Yeah, as I said... Passive, lack of map control, lack of forcing C3 T rotations is kind of going to be Fiend's problem throughout the half. Right, so we go to the next gun round. Now, we're going to get uh, some more outside grenades here. This is going to be a very fast upper hit. As you can see, Red Star already jumping onto the top of Mini. You can see the kind of par thing here. They're going to try and get in through Mini, and they're going to try and hit upper very fast. They've got Bubble throwing the standard upper utility. Uh, no Molly for the top of that? Oh, look, Bubble's going to do the Molly for the top now. No, no Molly for the top of Interesting. Um, but as you can see, again, this is just this is just too easy for Dignitas. Like, they, they know exactly what's coming. Um, you know, Lecro is here abusing the mini players. There's two in upper that basically don't have to look anywhere. They know mini sorted. They just have to worry about door and hut. Heap is already getting, like, relatively aggressive for some info on ramp, and he's going to rotate around and, and help Heaven here. Um, Hallzerk is already making motions to come up the ladder, and this hit is just going to fall apart on upper. Um, hang on, let's just go and make sure we don't miss any frags. So someone dies by mini, someone dies by door, trade it out. Han actually also manages to take out Lecro outside, so he trades the outside frag. So once again, Fiend have traded into a 3v3 on an upper hit. But again, it's the same problem, is because it's so one-dimensional, like, they have 
all the time in the world. Freiburg does really well to, to create issues and, and take up Fiend's time so they can't get into the site cleanly. And does really well to actually get a kill here. Horzer kills a man who tried to drop down into vents. And I don't really understand the vent drop. That was the bomb. Not sure what Fiend were thinking there. Bubble particularly. Like, are they going to try and change this into a lower hit? Maybe that's what they were going to try and do. Seems a bit of a risky strategy to me. It just seemed like he knew that upper sight hit was kind of dead in the water. And so he just tried to get down to lower. But bam, harm's going to die. And once again, Fiend throw a very simplistic, very one-dimensional A hit, which uh, Dignitas mop up very easily. Now, coming to the next gun round, round 22. Um, we've got to be hoping now from Fiend that we're going to see a different look because... The simplistic, relatively fast upper hit, they've done basically three in a row, their pistol and the two gun rounds, all three have been stopped dead in their tracks, all for pretty much the same reason, because Dignitas saw what was coming from a mile away, and were able to rotate in before Fiend could get set up in any kind of realistic post-plant situation. Hydration station, baby. What am I looking at? Right, so we're expecting a different look, right? Well, we're expecting, we're hoping for a different look from Fiend. And it looks like we might get it. Right, minimalistic outside slash yard nades thrown again. I'm going to switch between calling it outside or yard. I apologize. Like, just relax, okay? I, it gets called either, depending on what casters you're listening to. Um, We actually are going to get the full set of deep outside smokes. Um... The problem is, is that Dignitas are set up actually perfectly for this, and I don't like this from Han, this kind of, like, solo play outside. Like, no nades, no anything, just walks into an AWPA. They've been ramp a couple of times. They know Heap is playing ramp. They know that he's very unlikely to be playing ramp with an AWP. So where is the AWPA going to be? The AWPA is likely to be outside, and you know Dignitas are going to have an AWP. You, you've, you've been playing against the AWP. You died to Halsa in Vents bubble, if we remember, last round. I just think that's a free death. I'm not really sure what Han's doing there. Like, of course there's going to be an AWPA somewhere outside. Why you're dry peeking, like, with no flashbangs? Yes, you've got the deep smokes in, but the deep smokes, like, you know that an AWPA playing, like, in here... Like, could have potentially gotten him. There was an angle here. There's obviously this angle up here. Like, this is an off angle from Hallzerk. Like, I don't necessarily blame Han to not expecting that angle. But what I do criticize is just the dry peeking. Like, they obviously have an AWP. It's obviously going to be outside. Like, why are you dry peeking? And Dignitas had the perfect setup anyway to stop any sort of, like, outside lurk. So, as we can see, Fiend are kind of up creep without paddle here. Like... They've been struggling 5v5 rounds, even when they manage to trade. And they do trade in space well. That is a definitely a positive to say about Fiend's um, T side, is they space and they trade really well. They're just so simplistic with some of their, their looks in the playbook. And it seems like their new T side's not just not got a very deep playbook. So anyway, they're going to default for a bit. They're all just kind of chilling out. Very passive. Again, Dignitas, like, can chill. Hallzerk has left outside because Letcro can look after Secret and kind of keep an eye on outside on his own. They've got uh, Forrest and Freiburg, who are the upper players, and Hallzerk's come back to help Heap in ramp. And that's another positive aspect of Dignitas' CT side. I think their rotations are very good, very proactive. Now, Bubble has at least thrown himself a flash here. Um, they've got to take some risks here, Fiend, so I don't mind Bubble going for this kind of, like, solo control, throwing some nades, making the hit kind of uncomfortable. Or making the ramp hold, sorry, kind of uncomfortable. Um, who died? Someone died. Where did Han die? No, it wasn't Han. It was Halsey. Uh, wait, did Victor come? Yeah, okay, Victor also came as part of the ramp play. Didn't see that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't mind this from, like, Fiend, they have to try something. It's, like, a bit simplistic. Like, they are just kind of walking into the AWP. Again, it shows, like, I think a little bit of a, a, a poor understanding of Nuke is that, okay, so the AWP just got an, a kill outside. Where's it going to go? There's only two places it's realistically going to go, Heaven or Ramp. They walk into it on Ramp. 
uh, I don't know. I, I, I maybe like just grouping up and trying to take some map control together here because the only way they have any hope of doing anything is by grabbing some sort of map control, either ramp or outside. They chose to go for ramp, but only sent two. One guy kind of dry peaks, gets orped. Like, again, it's just not looking great from Fiend. Um, and in a 3v5, like, you can essentially ra write this round off, but we'll play it out. Um, they're going to try and go upper here, and Dreamer gets a kill on Freiburg. That's a good entry from Dreamer. Um, Freiburg should probably win that duel, but, you know, Dignitas know where to hit. Um, not really a lot of hope for the Fiend boys here. Dreamer on his 7% chilling in vents. What a guan, brother! And yeah, not much hope for him, and he will die shortly. Jumping around, and he's going to get killed from Heap from the tippity top of ramp. Right, round 24, boyos. As we can see, the comeback is very much on. And this is actually gonna be the single round from Fiend where I most like their initial approach to the round. Um, as we can see, what they're gonna do is they're gonna get some grenades, the deep smoke set up again outside and give them lots of space to work with. They burn a lot of uh, Dignitas' utility this way, which I like. And as we can see, Bubble is going to escort Han and get him into... Apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, by the way. I just assume H4RN is H-A-R-N, so Han is how I would say that. Um, and as we can see, we get the escort into secret. Now, I like this from Fiend. They finally got some reasonable map control. They've got control at the moment of outside but more importantly they've gotten a player into secret without dignitas knowing for sure that that has happened and that gives themselves another aspect of the hit and what this is uh gonna do is is actually gonna get dignitas to kind of abandon ramp and that's what they do heap has to go lower and has to respect the possibility that somebody could have gotten down secret so ramp is actually open now and fiend again they're making the right sort of move here they're starting to move towards ramp to clear it out because they know they've caused a rotation as we can see dignitas are doing the usual nuke thing when you lose map control somewhere particularly once somebody gets down into secret you start to have a look lobby they don't actually fully commit to the lobby aggress i would have preferred that dignitas did here as you can see there is a gap because fiend is securing ramp and dream is the only person in I, we, they actually could have got forest into lobby here and i wish they'd done it um it was the right idea they look for a bit of info don't really get anything now what this is going to do is this is actually going to get let Crow to rotate down to lower because they suspect a lower hit is coming so as we can see fiend have actually for once in the round created some sort of confusion in dignitas's mind as to exactly what is going on dignitas are rotating they're not 100 sure they've had to abandon ramp because they've still got halls outside but they need to commit heat down to lower so they gave ramp up lecro is now also gonna come down to lower as we can see through the vents so everything fiend have done here is actually set up for a really nice round now, I think from here is where fiends start to go a little bit astray in the round. I think what they need to do is they need to crunch lower using Hans Lurk from Secret. As you can see, he's coming through. It's got Heap looking this way. Lecro's looking onto site, but this is a pretty tenuous lower hold. If they hit three through ramp, I think Dignitas are basically going to be forced into a retake. Problem is, not what Fiend do. Full ramp control could even maybe try and take some hell control here. Sort of tease it. And they're going to start to fall back into an upper hit. I don't why they have decided to fall back into the harder bomb site to hit. When they had every reason to try and go lower because they already had ramp control. Like, I don't understand what they expect Red Star's Lurk in ramp to do. Who from Dignitas is likely to rotate up ramp and through lobby this way? It's a very unlikely rotation to ever happen on Nuke. It's the least likely rotation to happen. Like, I, I, I can't think of a reasonable scenario where you'd be like, yes, in a 5v5, or in a 4v4 or whatever, or when the upper hit comes in, someone's going to run all the way up ramp and run through lobby that way, or run all the way through hell and run to lobby that way. It just doesn't seem very realistic to me. Like Again, I just think it, it shows 
to me a bit of a poor understanding of of nuke and its rotations and such from fiend anyway they're falling back into the upper hit another thing to note is they don't have the most grenades they probably got enough for an upper hit they got some mollies and flashes and whatnot but it's just going to end up being really simplistic they don't even actually throw any grenades they just kind of go for the um, Forest obviously in this little cubby behind the vent is traded out and Heap is going to pick up Han his lurk in lower like Han's lurk just ends up coming to absolutely nothing I, again I think this is a, a sign of a bit of a misunderstanding of Nuke from Fiend is that I think they need the hit to come in first and then Han to look for his lurk Han was just too he was positioned too far up and he started his lurk kind of in terms of aggressive positioning too early such that the lower players can kind of just look around for that lurk. They don't have to worry because the upper hit hasn't really come in yet. And yeah, this is just going to get stopped in his tracks. Like, they do take out Freiburg, but, you know, once again, Dignitas know exactly what's coming. Red Star is completely ineffectual in this ramp lurk and then obviously gets shot in his back as he's again i don't know why i don't understand why he's so convinced somebody's gonna come up ramp i really don't i can't fathom it i really can't fathom it i don't understand why fiend seemed so convinced with that play to set red star up in ramp for the lurk they seemed so convinced somebody was coming up ramp i don't i don't really understand why anyway halls up comes up through hell and, you know, with bubble on 9% and two people on the upper side and, you know, the rotations coming in, like, this is, you know, easy peasy. Allzerk throws in a granata to take some damage off uh, Victor and they just wait for a free man retake. Um, funnily enough, a, a 2v3 with the bomb down where bubble's on 9% is actually the best, one of the best chances Fiend had to win a T round this whole half. Um, but yeah, we're just going to see the retake come in from three different angles. Although this is going to be very hard for Fiend to hold off. They get Bubbles' position, which is an easy kill for Heap. And then Horzuk comes out and identifies Victor's position fairly quickly, and bam. Another successful round from Dig, and another round where... Okay, so actually, this was slightly different as to why Fiend lost this one. The initial setup was really good. Took the right map control, dragged the Dignitas around in different rotations. Just the execution, once they had that map control, again, I think it just showed a slightly poor understanding of the T side of Nuke. They picked, I think, the wrong site to hit. Red Star being set up for his Lurk was ineffectual. Han's Lurk was ineffectual. I think a combination of the way he played it, he was positioned too aggressively. And the way his team played it, the lurk was coming in kind of before the hit came in. A little bit messy. Anyway. Right, round 25. Hydrate. Now, this is where um things start getting a little bit bizarre. Uh like I'll just I'll just play looking at outside to show you. So a bunch of grenades. Not a full set of outside smokes, which is weird. And then Red Star just... I don't... I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Fiend have not gotten away with walking into Mini without Lecro looking at it once. Don't really know why they thought they'd get away with it here. So they just kind of lose somebody for no reason. Um, just having a look at my notes. I don't even think it's worth like continuing this round out much, but we'll just play it through. Like this is a pretty quick round, so we'll just play it through. Um, I think at this point it feels like the tilt is starting to set in for Fiend. Han does get into secret, which is like a boon. That is a good thing, you know. That happened. Red Star traded his life, not for nothing, I guess. I guess in some sense it helped Han get down to secret, but um, we'll just play this round out. They're just gonna because they've got Han in secret, they're gonna go for for the lower play. Um, and they're just going to get stopped in their tracks. Heat manages to die. Uh, Han's lurk is found by Forrest. Han really had, like, there's two rounds in a row where he's had very little success on the secret lurk. Um, just something to, to kind of point out. Um, you know, you would have hoped that one of those lurks would come off. Didn't. And now this, again, is just, there's just not much hope for this hit. Horzuk drops the bomb, which is just a benefit. And, just a uh, and it's hard work for the T's. 
Now, obviously, I've said um, in one of the previous rounds, it was my favorite initial setup from Fiend. This is, again, a round that I like. The problem is, is it's taken until 13.13. It's taken from thir till 13.13 for Fiend to actually do this. And it is an attempt to meaningfully take outside control. And they get the whole team there, all the smokes up, everyone involved. Unfortunately, they lose Dreamer to spam through Squeaky Door. Like, this is going to happen occasionally on Nuke. It, it always feels irritating, no matter which side you're on when you lose someone to this spam. It is going to happen occasionally. It's a shame it happened on this round. Because actually, I, I liked the fact Fiend finally committed to like putting four people outside. Really make Dignitas work for that outside hold. Because once you've conditioned the CTs to think they have to work to keep control of Yard and keep control of outside, that is when Nuke becomes a whole lot easier for the T side. And I think this is too late in the half for Fiend to kind of catch on to this, but at least they try it now. Um, what we're going to see here is Victor is going to make his way into Garage. God, I forgot what it was called for a second. Um, as we can see, Lecro is, uh, is getting ass spammed out in secret so this is good they get let crow pretty much in response red star is down to nine but that's not the end of the world it's a 4v4 there's space to work with now we can see a little duel that is about to take place over here Horzak and victor Horzak with some good awareness here bam takes victor out that's just good awareness from Horzak. fair play to him uh it's also brave from Horzak, i think considering the commitment the number of players that fiend committed to outside halls are going for that re-aggression is is quite brave um but i respect it i think it was it was a calculated risk i think he he, he took it well the only problem for me here is yeah it kind of sticks around a little bit um i i really wanted him to kind of work his ass off to get like back here like behind this blue box where he can then sort of take a lot more peaks outside and he's less exposed, and he's more likely to kind of live for a long time and make Fiend work for the kill on him. I think the problem was kind of falling back the way he did, and then here going for like a fight on this angle. I would have liked him to just knife out, get behind this box, like, you know, it, neither here nor there. Like, no, no, nothing super critical to be of Horzak. I think maybe he could have played that slightly better, that's all. Um, now, this is going to be tough. Uh, a 3v3, they've got outside control, but as you can see... Dignitas have done the thing you do on nuke when you lose outside control or when you lose significant map control like ramp and you push lobby now now forest flank is going to come in fairly quickly but i think i think fiend are a little bit slow again just this is probably the round i'm going to be least critical of because i think this was a round where fiend gave themselves the kind of best chances Apart from the other round where I thought their initial set was good, got Han down in secret, and then they hit upper instead of hitting lower. Apart from that round, the problem is, again, it, it shows just a slight lack of comfort and familiarity, I think, with Nuke, in that they don't... It takes them a little bit long to realise that this flank is a problem. Still haven't realised, still aren't really looking for it. Now, there. And you're like, but, but what do you mean? Red Star realised it right as Forrest was about to peak. Amazing timing. The problem is Forrest has gotten up too close. Like, he, 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 this is not a good fight for Red Star State. He's not really, like, honed in, ready on the angle. He's got right eye disadvantage. Forrest is coming around this box with his right side. He's on the left side, so he's got a disadvantage on the angle he's on. I, I think it was just a little bit too late to think, oh, God, that flank might come in as he was basically getting shot. Um, so yeah, in this 3v2 now, like, I don't see much hope. Han is here, Bubble is here. They're so disconnected, like, they're just kind of playing individually here. Um, you've got to hope they just, you know, like I say, get the individual work done. Um, Bubble is having a peek upper, doesn't see anything. Freiburg's in a nice, very passive angle on upper. And then, again, this is just good understanding of the CT side from Dignitas. Freiburg is like, okay, well, we have lobby control. The only places they can come from are Hart. Uh, sorry, hut from Mini and from Heaven. So Freiburg is not exposing himself to Heaven while holding Mini. Heap 
is holding hell because again they know that that's likely to be an area that is being taken control of so he's ready in case bubble tries to drop down Freiburg grabs a hold of Han as he tries to go for the mini play. Bubble, it's pretty much known where Bubble is now. As you can see, Freiburg's looking at it. Heap is ready for it. Like, they all know exactly what's going on here. And Bubble will get it. Now, we're not going to uh, look through the whole of these rounds. Um, we're just going to come through to uh, show you roughly what sort of happens. So this is a slightly another slightly different look from Fiend. They go for like a very passive default um, up until about a minute in the round where this is when they throw their kind of like outside utility. Um, and then they're going to go for like an inner kind of play. Like they're kind of looking and, and teasing. Um, unfortunately, they're going to get taken out by Horzik's ult. And again, he drops the bomb. This is another thing. Um, on Fiend, and I think this is something they need to tighten up, is they lost the bomb in awkward positions a lot. Like, there was one time that they lost the bomb down there. There was one time that a guy lost the bomb in ramp. There was a few awkward moments where they lost the bomb on a player that probably shouldn't have had it. Like, if Victor's the guy who's, like, taking contact outdoor and trying to be your entry man, he shouldn't have the bomb on his back, in my opinion. Um, Dreamer doesn't even look for the trade there. I think Dreamer needed to swing out and look for the trade. Um, you know, just honest opinion there. And, yeah, this hit's just going to fall apart. And we're not going to watch the rest of the round. You know, 2v5, they're not going to win this one. And we go straight to the last round. And we'll just play this one out. As you can see, it's, like, Galil's and, you know... Crap weaponry, few grenades. Uh, and we're going to get a pretty short and quick play here. I think by this point, Fiend are kind of done with the game. Uh, I think they realize it's out of their hands. And they just go for like a very straightforward ramp play. Um, heat falls off. Hallzerk rotates. And they just kind of annihilate the hit at ramp. There you go. Um, so to summarize... Um, to summarize, the big issues from Fiend were very one-dimensional play. Um, only towards the very end of the half, when they were already kind of scrambling and Dignitas were clearly in their comfort zone, did Fiend start to throw some slightly different looks to their T-half, start to have a little bit more of a focus on keeping Dignitas guessing with regards to Yard. In general did not get in general did not make dignitas uncomfortable they did not do enough to make dignitas say crap we need to rotate into a slightly suboptimal nuke setup the optimal nuke setup is if you can play two towards sort of outside you can play two inner and you play one towards ramp right one of those outside players should kind of be hovering around near heaven so that they can do the kind of rotate towards ramp rotate towards up that sort of thing but you need to make Dignitas or any CT side rotate. You need to make them uncomfortable. You need to make them think there's gaps. You need to take some map control, whether that be outside sometimes, whether that sometimes be putting lots of pressure and taking ramp control. Fiend just didn't have enough complexities to their looks. And the few times they did get Dignitas moving around a little bit, I think it just came down to what looked like a poorer understanding of the map than Dignitas had. Han had two secret lurks that just got absolutely nothing done. There was the one time they took ram control. They had somebody in secret. They had everything set up for a great lower hit. And for some reason, they fall back into an upper hit, leaving Red Star to lurk in ramp completely ineffectually. Didn't get anything done. And yeah, individually, you can look at these rounds and you can say, okay, you know, they did this wrong, they did that wrong. You know, it happens. Like, you can't win every round. You've got to take some risks. You know, some of those rounds, they might have won on another day. The problem is, once you pile all of these rounds together and you look at this T-half as a whole, you start to see the kind of common flaws that Fiend had in their T-side. Um, I'm sure that they will look at this demo and have some improvements moving forward. It seems like at some point they had a timeout with their coach because they did improve towards the back end of that half. Like the first three or f four gun rounds, well, the first three or four rounds we looked at, the pistol and the first few gun rounds were like pretty poor and like so one-dimensional and just seemed like Fiend had no idea what they were doing. 
it seemed like they came into the half a little bit more. I'm not sure if they had a timeout and had a chat with each other or if their coach had a chat with them, but they seemed to improve towards the back end of the half. So I don't think Fiend are necessarily like a completely hopeless T-sided nuke team. Like they look like they could have put a better T-side together. But yeah, there did seem to be a little bit of a lack of understanding in, in some moments of exactly how to take advantage of some of the positional advantages they gained and turn them into more like concrete, you know, one man advantage, you know, getting the bomb down and getting a post plant. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, all of that good guff and expect some more content to be coming, particularly focused on previewing the major. We've got the major, first major for two years. First major I will be covering as a member of HLTV. I'm excited. You better be excited. See you next time, boys and girls.